previously, I talked about my cell volition theory, which I dreamt up somewhere in the 1970s because of my interest in biological growth. Um, it seemed to me that these tropisms, as I said before, um, were guided by light and gravity. And I tried to relate that to human growth. But um, essentially, it was suggesting that position was necessary because each individual cell is pre-programmed to grow in a specific way and it needs to know where it is and um, therefore position becomes important and of course over time we're talking about posture. So I was interested in what it was that guided growth. I was being taught at school that it was largely um, controlled by the genes, which of course is true, but um, that the malocclusion we see today, I was told, was due to changes in the genes which had occurred over the long periods of time involved. Um, and then I actually got involved in the animal evolution and looked at animals such as giraffes, which um, over the years have grown longer necks. But when you look at the time span, it, it approaches 8 million years. Now that's a long time and represent a minute movement each generation. However, I was being told that uh, malocclusion had occurred in the relatively short period but over the last 18,000 years. And when I looked at the time scale, it just didn't seem to fit because you can get quite large differences in human growth within just four years. Look at this illustration here. Um, the outcome of this was that I became very suspicious with the concept of genetic guidance of growth. And I did a lot of experiments myself. I initially took bean seeds and I planted them upside down, right way up and one side or the other. And I'm very interested to see how the plants, which were clearly identically the same, they all came out of the same pod, how the shape of the plant was totally different. You can see from this slide here, depending on which way up it was planted. So clearly the genes may control the growth, but they don't control the shape. I extended this into my theory and I created the, the concept of the tropic premise. I wrote an article on this suggesting that correct posture was needed if you wish to have correct growth. I was interested in the fact that um, animals by and large grow very similarly. But um, a, a chap called Horowitz back in, way back in 1960 did some experiments on identical twins and he found that um, there was a, a big variation of growth in the facial area the rest of the body was more or less the same, but there was quite a wide variation of actual growth of the jaws within identical twins. Well, they had the same genes, therefore I thought something must be causing this. And I, that was what led me to develop the tropic premise, which very simply says, if the tongue is on the palate, the lips are closed, and the teeth are either in contact or very near contact, then the growth of the face will be normal. It occurred to me that using my cell volition theory, the individual cells know where to grow, but this can't happen if your posture is wrong. If you've got your mouth wide open, the cells can't grow to the right place. I was being taught, as I say, um, that this was all genetic, but it seemed quite obvious to me that it had to be environmental. And uh, um, I wondered why. Of course, you look back over the history of man and 
we started farming some 12,000 years ago. Um, and this undoubtedly made a big difference. Um, but was it the consistency of the food or the quality of the food? There are so many other factors too. Uh, around about 1500 or so, certainly in the UK, we started to move into homes. And over time, these homes got more and more sealed, if I can call it that, so that there was less and less natural air. Therefore, this undoubtedly tends to lead to lots of allergens floating around in the room. And of course, as a result, we develop allergies. And this, as you know, frequently leads to nasal obstruction. And this is what I felt was possibly altering the posture because if a child can't breathe through their nose, they'll open their mouth. And you'll then have quite a, 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 you know, a destruction of the normal posture, leading to a deformation of the bones and, to a lesser extent, the tissue. There seemed to be um, a major influence in young children. You can see that five-year-olds um, often have open mouth postures. And indeed, Klatz and all way back in the 60s found that um, five-year-old children, this was in Germany, civilized country, leave their mouths open more than 80% of the time. One wonders why this is. Later on, I think we all realize the social importance of keeping our mouths closed. And that, I think, is why most of you in the room now have your mouths closed. But certainly, one goes through quite a prolonged period with the mouth open. And I'm sure this has a big effect on the, the normal growth. Now, in terms of other factors which might affect growth, um, there's the issue of breastfeeding. Now, we almost universally um, breastfeed for a few months rather than longer, some people less. Usually, they use supplemental feeding. Now, I actually think this is where the problem lies. Um, I think a natural adult swallow doesn't develop until two or three years old. I and mean, if you introduce a young child to spoon feeding, they don't know how to swallow. They're used to sucking. And I, there's no doubt that this causes um, a, a big difference. But if you add all these various factors together, you'll find that it affects the whole of the growth of the face, which instead of growing forward as it should, tends to go downwards as mine has. And um, this inevitably um, shortens the length of each of the um, dental arches so that not only are the teeth and jaws in the wrong position, but they're crowded and there's not room for the wisdom teeth. Now, some people say to me, well, what can we do for our children to avoid them having these problems? And rather jokingly, I say, well, the best way is to sell your home, buy a cave, perhaps in a mountain, and just live off natural foods that you can find. Um, I don't find many takers for that. Um, and we'll actually discuss the more practical ways in which we can influence the growth in my next address. But essentially, it will be about position and posture.